Well, hello and how are you today? Gorse flower mead. I've been meaning to make this mead, gorse flower mead, for an age. Spring is nearly upon us. It snowed yesterday, but the bushes are in full bloom. They're looking gorgeous. So come on, let's go and pick some gorse flower petals to make the gorse flower mead. Come on. What an awesome afternoon out with the family picking gorse flowers. Three pints of them, all set up, ready to go. For this recipe, you're going to need three pints of your gorse flower petals. Lightly packed, don't compress them too much, just fill the pint glass or your measuring jug full of the wonderful yellow flowers. Fantastic. And then you're going to need your honey. And what I'm using is four pounds worth of El Cheapo shop-bought, reasonably priced runny honey. You don't need anything too fancy, I find. If you can buy local, do so. But it's not essential to make a good mead. I find that some of the cheaper honeys are actually better for mead making, especially when you add your own flavorings, your herbs, your petals, fantastic stuff. Right then. First thing we need to do is decant the jars of honey into your big saucepan. Oh yes, that's always the fun part, sticky, lovely stuff. Just pour in your four jars, your four one pound pots of honey, straight in. Get as much out as you can. I normally give them a quick rinse with boiling water to dissolve any residual viscous honey. Get it all out. Oh yes. I really want to start keeping bees next year, maybe. I'll have to look into what types of bees we can have up here in Auckland. When we were out earlier, we did pick enough gorse flower petals to make two gallons worth. However, the shop didn't have enough honey. They only had four jars, so we bought them out. <clears throat> that means I have another three, four pints worth of leaves, petals, flowers. And that means I can make another gorse wine. I made gorse wine last year. Delicious it was. But I don't actually think I did a taste test of it. I drank it all. Actually, no. I might try a gorse flower Bland. Now that would be delicious, it will. Oh, I love my blands, I do. If you haven't tried a bland, recipes in the description down below, give it a try. It's well worth making. Last pot, any goes, right then. Now whack the kettle on, because you want to add boiling water to your jars, rinse them out, and add boiling water to your honey. Fantastic. Give them a good shake, get all that honey out. So now you want to pour over your boiling water about three litres worth on top of your honey. Pour it over. And then you want to throw in your three pints worth of lovely yellow gorse flowers. Straight in the pot, brilliant stuff. And get every last flower out. You now want to 
let your pot simmer away for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Let all that honey mix in and dissolve into the water and allow those flowers just to become, just release all that lovely coconut pea-like flavour. They'll do it, so let it just simmer away 20 minutes. You don't want it to boil. If it does boil, the flowers will tend to burn and get a bit of a, a butterstock flavour to it, which you don't really want. You also want to add a decent shake of lemon juice. Honey doesn't have a lot of the nutrients that the yeast needs to grow and become really, really vigorous. Lemon juice or citric acid does really help give the honey a boost and the yeast a boost as well in the honey. As well as your lemon juice, you want to be adding one big cup of tea. No milk, just normal tea to your mead. Again, this adds a lot of body and tannins to your mix, fantastic. So, pour the tea in. As well as your lemon juice. Then allow it to simmer for a while. 20 minutes, half an hour. Don't let it come to the boil though. So set it aside on a simmer, nice low heat. Let it do its thing and then come back to it after you've had a cup of or a gin and tonic. So I'll see you 20 minutes time. Well now, your gorse flower mead has been simmering away for 20 odd minutes or so. Smelling brilliant, I've had a quick taste. So coconutty, it is sublime. Anyway, what you want to do now is pour in all the hot liquid and the petals into a big fermenting bucket. Right then dude, that's what we need to do. Pour, pour, it's hot so you're going to be out the way for a second. Come on, let's do it, let's transfer it. Yeah, that is a loaf of bread. Tasty isn't it, eh? Homemade bread, brilliant. He loves his food, so do I. And then just pour it in. Awesome. It's looking so golden, so bright yellow, sunshine-ish. It smells coconutty, pea-like. No, not that type of pea, but sweet pea. Yeah, Monge too smell coconutty. I can't wait to try this. Being a mead, it's going to take about a year or so to ferment and mature, so it's going to be brilliant this time, next spring. Out in the patio, in the courtyard, having a barbecue. Hopefully, if the weather's good. Anyway, I'm going to let this cool now. I'm going to be back with you in a minute to add the yeast. With your honey, your water and your gorse flower petals, in your fermenting bucket, you want to allow it to cool and then you want to add your yeast. I'm using a high alcohol, high strength sachet of yeast with nutrient added. I'm going to pour it in. Awesome stuff. You could also use a generic multi-purpose wine yeast for this. I like my meads nice and strong, I do. I think they can carry the flavour of the alcohol really, really well. That's why I'm using a high alcohol, high strength, Yeast. Awesome stuff. So just pour it in your bucket and give it a good stir. With yeast added to your bucket, you want to set it aside in a lovely warm place with the lid on, keep it covered, and wait three days. Or thereabouts. Two and a half, three and a half, about three days for that yeast to do its magic, start working, give it a stir daily. Keep on stirring, and then three days later, you can bring your bucket back and strain it out. You want to remove all of the petals through a sieve and into another saucepan or measuring jug. Get all those leaves out, fantastic stuff. And then pour your liquid, your mead, into an empty demijohn. I've used all my demijohns at the moment, they're all full of weird, wonderful wines. So I'm using an empty water bottle. They work. I don't like them as much as I do glass demijohns. They work for short-term emergencies when you run out. So now, pour it straight in. Once you've added all of your liquid to your demijohn, you want to put on an airlock and let it bubble away until it dries out 
until it's perfect, until it's wonderful, put aside a nice warm place, and then you can go and make some gorse flower wine, such as this video up by here. See you soon now. Bye-bye.